Now, one of the great mysteries of human existence may have been solved by scientists at Cambridge University. The question of why Neanderthal man suddenly died out after dominating Europe for 300,000 years seems to be down to mass migration. Using archaeological evidence from Perigord in southwestern France, an area known for its early human settlements, researchers found that Neanderthals vanished after a huge surge of Homo sapiens from Africa overwhelmed them by 10 to 1. It's thought the sheer number of migrating early humans pushed the smaller Neanderthal population into colder habitats and they eventually died out. Well, Professor Chris Stringer is research leader in human origins at the Natural History Museum and he joins me now along, Chris, with a, a couple of friends who I, I think you'll explain in a moment. Um, but was, was this just a surge of migration? Were they just outnumbered or did Homo sapiens have a competitive edge as well? Well, I think it's going to be a combination of things. So initially, one imagines small numbers of modern people coming in, ultimately from Africa, and then probably growing their numbers actually in Western Europe through perhaps better ways of processing food, better ways of adapting to the environment. The climate was very unstable at this time, so the populations that could adapt quickest would be the ones that would be favoured. So moderns may have had the edge there. Uh, how have you worked all of this out? I mean, is it, is it using uh, fossil, fossilised remains and that sort of thing? Well, unfortunately, we've got here... A, so this is a replica of a Neanderthal skull from France and a modern human skull. So, unfortunately, there aren't enough human fossils that you can just count the number of human bones and work out the population size. So these researchers have used other ways. So they've looked at, for example, the numbers of Neanderthal stone tools in sites and the number of modern human stone tools. And they've looked at the sizes of the sites that were occupied and also the amount of food debris that the people left behind. So totalling all those up together, they come up with something like 10 times the number of modern humans compared with the that, last Neanderthal. That, right, but that human tool, the one nearest you, does look... It looks a bit better fashioned than the Neanderthal one. Is that right? Well, in general, modern humans made um, more complex tools. So, you know, these are typical examples. But the Neanderthals actually were pretty good at stone tool making. Um, but the moderns use much more materials like antler and bone. Um, they weaved, they had needles, okay. things like that. Uh, were they completely different species, just for, for people who don't know? Um, I certainly regard them as that. Um, there are different views of that, but they're different enough. So we think they separated about 400,000 years ago. Neanderthals evolved in Europe and Asia, we evolved in Africa. And I think they're different enough to be different species. But did they interact? Uh, did they interbreed even? Despite being different species, in my view, uh, we know that closely related species can interbreed, and we know now these two did. And probably you and I both have about 2% of Neanderthal DNA in us from interbreeding that happened not in Europe, but when modern humans first came out of Africa about 60,000 okay, years ago. Okay, and briefly, where did the Neanderthal go? Well, I think it's, it's right that they moved to the marginal areas, so they would have been down in places like southern Spain, uh, maybe they were in southern Greece, southern Italy, um, and their numbers just gradually whittled away. So I think they just gradually faded away uh, in the face of both climate change, uh, rapid climate change, and the modern human growth of numbers. OK, Chris Stringer, thank you very much for joining us.